unde parentis protoplasti, frau de factor condolens, quando pominoxialis morte mor sucoruit, ipse lignum tunc nota vit, damna lignut solvere. Dulce lignum dulce esclavos, dulce pondus sustine, equa patri filio Sid beate Trinitati Gloria, cuius alma nos redemit, ad servat gratia. Crux fidelis interondes, arboruna nobilis, nulla silva talent profert, fronde flore germine, dulce Esclavos, dulce pondo sustine. Angelingua gloriosi, per elium certaminis, et suo per crucis trofeo. Dictrium fum nobile, qualite rerem torbis, immolatus vicerii. Crux fidelis interondes, arboruna nobis. Patri filioque inclit 
de parentis protoplasti, fraude factor condolens, quando opomin oxialis, morte mor sucoruit. Ipse lignum tunc notavit, damna lignut solvere. Dulce lignum dulce esclavos, dulce pondus sostine. Equa patri filio Semperna sit beate Trinitati gloria Cuius alma nos redemit ad servat gratia Okay. Okay. Now I'm here. Let me check that I am in fact here. Uh, yes. Okay. I'm very sorry for that. I had some technical problems, obviously, uh, in the redundancy department of redundancy department, but I'm here now. Sorry for the uh, delay. Anyway, happy Monday, not happy Monday. Welcome to World War Three. whatever. We'll see what happens. We know God's in charge. And um, I think that no matter what, it's very interesting times we're living in. And, and you know, ever since my conversion, I have thought in apocalyptic terms. I think I was shown that by God when he brought me into the church that we were talking about apocalyptic terms and um, nothing is happening that's making that seem further away. So anyway, I'll get started because I've already lost five minutes to technical difficulties and my own incompetence in addressing them. Uh, so um, I'll just get started. I uh, Let me just check. Yes, I do have my rosary. So, um, get started with St. Michael. I apologize again for the delay. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin and destruction of souls. Amen. Saint Joan of Arc, patroness of France and patroness of our prayer group, we ask you now to fight this battle with us by prayer, just as you led your troops to victory in battle. You, who are filled with the Holy Spirit and chosen by God, help us this day with the favor that we ask of you, that we all receive the graces which will result in us getting into heaven with all our loved ones, and that you defeat the current attempt to enslave humanity under the one world Antichrist Build Back Better World Economic Forum Government. Grant us by your divine and powerful intercession the courage and strength we need to endure this constant fight. O St. Joan, help us to be victorious in this and all the tasks that God presents to us. 
We thank you and we ask for your continuing protection of God's people. St. Joan, pious daughter of the church, pray for us. Amen. And I don't know if I have a suitably apocalyptic prayer for the conversion of the Jews. Um, okay, I, I, this isn't really a prayer for the conversion of the Jews. I will add a prayer for the conversion of the Jews. But before I get to the prayer of the, for the conversion of the Jews, I will simply recite uh, paragraph 674 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. The glorious Messiah's coming is suspended at every moment of history until his recognition by all Israel. And there are some people who think that the current uh, existential crisis for the survival of Israel will bring about the conversion of the Jews and therefore usher in the second coming. Okay. Prayer for the conversion of the Jews from Pope Pius XI is prayer for the feast of Christ the King. Of old, the Jews called down upon themselves the blood of the Savior. May it now descend upon them as a shower of redemption and of life. Amen. And the uh, Divine Mercy Chaplet. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended the dead on the third day. He rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer thee the body, blood, soul, and divinity of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 
have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer thee the body, blood, soul, and divinity of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer thee the body, blood, soul, and divinity of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer thee the body, blood, soul, and divinity of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer thee the body, blood, soul, and divinity of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to thy most holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. 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 Sing it over. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that uh, at least one of you thinks it's questionable to have that joyful amen given the out, outset onset of World War III. And you may be right. However, I will say one thing, not that you're not right, which is the victory has been won. Basically, Satan has been defeated, the victory has been won, and everything that happens in the world, absolutely everything, is what God wants for the best. And uh, also, by the way, we are assured of, um, if we play our cards right, an absolutely unimaginably wonderful eternity. So... Even, even, even on the cross, even on the cross, there's a way in which one could say that we can be joyful. Of course, there's the suffering of others, which is a serious problem. And the suffering of others, one could also make the argument that we shouldn't be joyful because of what's going to happen to us, but we should be um, in a very sober mood because of what is going to happen to others who are not in as good a situation as we are, either in time or for eternity. So anyway, whatever, whatever. I respect your view. You know, I don't know what's right. Okay. Rejoice always in the Lord. Yeah, rejoice always in the Lord. Anyway, okay. Uh, be that as it may, speaking of rejoicing in um, calamity, and speaking of rejoicing, in fact, by the way, I don't, I can't do it today because I haven't prepared, but I've started uh, reading Simone Weil. That, that looks like Simone Weil, W-E-I-L. Uh, the fashion of how to pronounce her last name changes over time. 
And of course, she would have pronounced it Vey, so that's now the popular way. But anyway, you may know it as Simone Weil. But in any case, um, I want to talk about her someday soon. And she's very well uh, connected, so to speak, with today's topic, which I'm reading from The Little Flowers of St. Francis. And I'm going to be reading his St. Francis on Perfect Joy. As a matter of fact, the title of The Little Flower is How St. Francis Taught Brother Leo That Perfect Joy is Only in the Cross. Okay. I Most of you know this story, but, but it's certainly worth periodically um, revisiting. And uh, also, oh boy, I, 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 am I going to try to fake a little Simone Weil? Um, Simone Weil, the, the, the book of her maxim, maxims is called Gravity and Grace. And as far as I understand the, the point of that title, she divides all of human existence into this dynamic between gravity and grace. And gravity is like everything in the physical world, like gravity pulls everything down in the physical world. Gravity is this downward force that all of our reality, with the exception of divine grace, exerts on us, pulling us down and trapping us. And the only counterpoint to that is divine grace. So we are kind of suspended between this infinite gravity, which only has one countervailing force, which is divine grace. And in some sense, we choose gravity or grace. But the only escape from the gravity is grace. So it's not completely unrelated to the Oh, that perfect joy is only in the cross. So let me get to, to St. Francis. One winter day, St. Francis was coming to St. Mary of the Angels from Perugia with Brother Leo, and the bitter cold made them suffer keenly. St. Francis called to Brother Leo, who was walking a bit ahead of him, and he said, Brother Leo, even if the friar minor, friars minor in every country give a great example of holiness and integrity, and good edification, nevertheless, write down and note carefully that perfect joy is not in that. I'm going to bring up the picture uh, so that, because uh, it's a little silly just seeing me here when we could be seeing St. Francis, so to speak. So let me see what this ha does. Okay, we've got that. You don't have it yet, but you will in a moment. And now let me um, have a little bit of me here. And, uh, okay, there we have it. Okay. That might make a little more sense for this story. Uh, maybe I should be a little bit bigger. So that, huh, okay, that's probably a little bit, okay. And when he had walked on a bit, St. Francis called him again, saying, Brother Leo, even if a friar minor gives sight to the blind, heals the paralyzed, drives out devils, gives hearing back to the deaf, makes the lame walk, and restores speech to the dumb, and what is still more, brings back to life a man who has been dead for four days, write that perfect joy is not in that. And going on a bit, St. Francis cried out again in a strong voice, Brother Leo, if a friar minor knew all languages and all sciences in scripture, if he also knew how to prophesy and to reveal not only the future, but also the secrets of consciences and minds of others, write down and note carefully that perfect joy is not in that. And as they walked on, after a while, St. Francis called again forcefully, 
Brother Leo, little lamb of God, even if a friar minor could speak with the voice of an angel and knew the courses of the stars and the powers of herbs and knew all about the treasures in the earth, and if he knew the qualities of birds and fishes, animals, humans, roots, trees, rocks, and waters, write down and note carefully that true joy is not in that. And going on a bit farther, St. Francis called out again strongly, Brother Leo, even if a friar minor could preach so well that he should convert all infidels to the faith of Christ, write that perfect joy is not there. Now, when he had been walking, when he had been talking this way for a distance of two miles, Brother Leo, in great amazement, asked him, Father, I beg you in God's name to tell me where perfect joy is. And St. Francis replied, When we come to St. Mary of the Angels, soaked by the rain and frozen by the cold, all soiled with mud and suffering from hunger, and we ring at the gate of the place, and the brother porter comes and says angrily, Who are you? And we say, We are two of your brothers. And he contradicts us, saying, You are not telling the truth. Rather, you are two rascals who go around deceiving people and stealing what they give to the poor. Go away. And he does not open for us, but makes us stand outside in the snow and rain, cold and hungry, until night falls. Then if we endure all those insults and cruel rebuffs patiently, without being troubled and without complaining, and if we reflect humbly and charitably that the porter really knows us and that God makes him speak thus against us, O oh, Brother Leo, write that perfect joy is there. And if we continue to knock and the porter comes out in anger and drives us away with curses and hard blows like bothersome scoundrels saying, Get away from here, you dirty thieves. Go to the poorhouse. Who do you think you are? You certainly won't eat or sleep here. And if we bear it patiently and take the insults with joy and love in our hearts, O oh, Brother Leo, write that that is perfect joy. And if later, suffering intensely from hunger and the painful cold with night falling, we still knock and call, and crying loudly, beg them to open for us and let us come in for the love of God. And he grows still more angry and says, Those fellows are bold and shameless ruffians. I'll give them what they deserve. And he comes out with a naughty club and grasping us by the cowl, throws us onto the ground, rolling us in the mud and snow, and beats us with that club so much that he covers our bodies with wounds. If we endure all those evils and insults and blows with joy and patience, reflecting that we must accept and bear the sufferings of the blessed Christ patiently for love of him, O oh, Brother Leo, write, that is perfect joy. And now hear the conclusion, Brother Leo. Above all the graces and gifts of the Holy Spirit which Christ gives to his friends is that of conquering oneself and willingly enduring sufferings, insults, humiliations, and hardships for the love of Christ. For we cannot glory in all those other marvelous gifts of God, as they are not ours but God's. As the Apostle says, What have you that you have not received? But we can glory in the cross of tribulations and afflictions, because that is ours. And so the Apostle says, I will not glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Wow. Okay, that is from the Little Flowers of St. Francis, a collection of accounts of things he said and events in his life written down by early followers. I, I, um, I'm responding anonymously to the chat stream. No, I think it is perfect joy. It's not perfect peace of mind. It's perfect joy. It's perfect joy. It's not peace of mind. It's joy. It's joy. Because of that last line, quoting, um, St. Paul, 
if, if you have all those other marvelous gifts, you can't glory in them because they're not yours. They're just, you know, they don't belong to you. They belong to God. They're not of you. Uh, I, we cannot glory in all those other marvelous gifts of God, as they are not ours but God's, as the Apostle says. What have you that you have not received? But we can glory in the cross of tribulations and afflictions, because that is ours. That is ours. That That is basically the ultimate fulfillment of our lives, I think, according to St. Francis is to have the ability to to uh, glory in them, to accept them and appreciate them and be grateful for them because they are sharing in the cross of Christ. And they are, in some sense, alleviating the suffering of, cro of Christ on the cross. So, so um, uh, I think it is actually a joy and uh, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, St. Thomas Aquinas says that happiness is the fulfillment for the purpose for which a creature is made. In other words, uh, the, the source of happiness for creatures is to fulfill the purpose for which they're made. You know, so, you know, whatever. If a bird's made for singing in the morning, then its happiness lies in singing in the morning, whatever. And if the purpose for what we're made actually as Christians is to uh, participate in the cross of Christ, which we know it is, then it is the source of joy for us. Okay. So, um, Hey, you're looking at the guy who talks the talk, not the guy who walks the walk, okay? I mean, I mean, let's hope with your prayers that, um, you know, before I reach the ripe old age that my father reached, 102 and a half, um, I may get a few steps closer. Anyway, that's obviously what, what that image is for. Um, beautiful image there on the screen. And I think that's it. Um, uh, a, a chatter says, I never met anyone who loves suffering. And, um, I don't think that you have to love the suffering. Suffering, I better not go there. Um, you certainly, don't love the experience of the suffering. I, I can't go there actually. In other words, in other words, the, the unpleasantness of the suffering remains, is always there. But is there a supernatural joy that penetrates that unpleasantness and lifts your you know heart up to exaltation despite that unpleasantness that's kind of the question i'll let you guys duke it out um but you know something um the only the only guides we have the, the only guide we have actually are the saints I mean, okay, we have, we have the Gospels. We have the words of Jesus. That's like the number one guide. But the Gospels aren't that long, right? They're only about so yay thick. Um, and then we have the saints. Because the saints, by definition, are those who got it. Those who got it. You know, those who, you know, the people who write instruction manuals, ought to be the people okay you know i i my hobby is car repair right one of my hobbies is is fixing my fixing cars if you have a car repair manual it better be written by one of two people it better be written by the manufacturer of the car 
you know, like I have, a, you know, the Jaguar shop manual that's written by Jaguar Motor Company. And okay, so you can have a you can have a repair manual um, written by the makers of the car, or you can have a repair manual written by a really good mechanic who has fixed a whole lot of Jaguars, taken apart a whole lot of Jaguars, put them together and gotten them to work perfectly. Those are the people you, you don't want to use a repair manual written by anyone but those two people right? Those two types of people. And that's what we have. We have the Gospels, which are, we have the Bible, which is written by God, the manufacturer of us. And we have the uh, writings of the saints. And and this, to some extent, the accounts of the saints, which are the uh, repair manuals written by real experts in doing the repair. Right? That's all we have. Um, and, and anyway, so the writings of the saints and, and writing of the saints, uh, I'm a little bit biased saints who have stood the test of time. So I don't really take seriously, uh, saints from my lifetime, let's say saints that lived in my lifetime. I don't really take seriously for two reasons. <laughs> One is. One is that um, they haven't haven't stood the test of time, so to speak. Whereas you know the Saint Francis's of the world, and even the Maximilian Colbys have stood the test of time. But the other reason is, frankly, that um, I'm going to get very controversial here. Then I really better get off the air before I I lose my Catholic credentials. Uh, Moises is probably going to disagree with this, but. Whether or not canonization is protected by infallibility is not ironclad. In other words, the consensus is that a pronouncement of sainthood is an infallible proclamation. However, it is not dogmatically established that the pronunciation of canonization is is a dog is a statement of dogma in other words in other words you're not violating dogma by saying i don't think canonization is protected by infallibility you're definitely an outlier you're definitely in you know two percent of theologians and saints in history and so forth you're in a, in a small minority but there is a minority that thinks that canonization is not protected by infallibility. Um, especially, look at what's happened. Look at what's happened. Um, you've had can recent canonizations with no devil's advocate. You've had recent canonizations with no prosecuting attorney, in other words, with nobody... Um, arguing before the canonization committee that the person should not be declared a saint. That never happened before in history, right? Until our lifetimes. That the Vatican should decide that for this saint, there will be no devil's advocate. Yeah, exactly. So look up, look up a saint for whom there was no devil's advocate. <laughs> and, you know, I know of one for sure. Um, so anyway, that's it. Uh, you also, by the way, have saints who who have been who have been eliminated, who have been neutralized, like Saint Christopher, right? Uh, that's not really exactly the same. I would like to read the devil's advocate for Bernadette. Well, she had one. You know what? I bet that's a kind of interesting point. Um, are canonization proceedings public documents? Maybe they are. Maybe you can actually uh, accept that. I'm sure they're in Latin. I don't think anyone's bothered to translate them. Um, popes. Popes, by the way. Um, again, I, here I'm happy to have Moises correct me, but my understanding is that until the middle of the 20th century, there were only maybe like three or four popes who were canonized. 
a half a dozen popes who are canonized. And then all of a sudden we have a flood of, uh, you know, you're auto almost automatically canonized if you are elected pope. Uh, that's an exaggeration. But we have a flood of uh, papal canonizations or canonizations of popes, whereas it was a very small number until recently. Um, there's a good book, that, but it's, uh, what's it called? I no longer remember. But there's a good book that was written about 10 or 15 years ago on the ins and outs of the canonization process. Um, well, I share some of your head scratching. <laughs> I have share some of your head scratching, guys. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I'm just going to read the chat stream a little bit. Oh, a Hail Mary. Oh, long time ago, huh? Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. I, it's good I look back on the chat stream. Uh, okay, the multiplied Hail Mary. And then I really will go, okay? So let's think of uh, an intention or two for a multiplied Hail Mary. Some of us, I'm sure, are thinking of the bishop that uh, somebody burst into the church, I think, when he was celebrating Mass and tried to stab him. And um, I want to stay in the good graces of YouTube, so I won't speculate on either the name or the ethnicity or the religion of the person who did that. Thank goodness he failed. Uh, but anyway, sorry, I'm cutting political. Uh, let's think of an intention. Okay. Okay. Ready? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm laughing because, you know, I used to say locked and loaded, ready, aim, fire. Now I'm thinking I should say 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 3, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, I'll say on your mark. Get set, go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And let's ask the Blessed Virgin Mary to apply each of our Hail Marys to each of our intentions. And with that, Oh, I will say goodbye, except in an hour and 15 minutes, you'll see me again, poor guys. Um, not really, but I have put up a premiere of, it's very short, it's 20 minutes long. And it's basically the talk I gave uh, Friday, I think, on voluntarism in Islam and in Reconstructionist Judaism. And what I did was I, you know, I compressed it. I took out all my, you know, time wasting and inefficiencies and looking for quotes and so forth and just compressed it. So it's only 20, I think it's actually 21 minutes long, the talk, maybe 20 minutes long. And you can play it at, you know, one and a half speed. <laughs> so it's only 12 minutes long. Um, anyway, that'll be on six o'clock will be the premiere, which means there'll be a chat stream. I'll tune in a little bit. Uh, and if you want to, you know, chat about it, that's when the chat stream will be. Uh, but then it'll be up there as a video. Um, and that is, I will, um, I'll show the, the show card, I think, here a little bit. If I have it, of course, I have it someplace else. So let me pull up the show card.
and uh okay so here's the show whoops yeah that is the show card actually okay so that's the show card and obviously um whoops here here i am i guess under the tree uh it's, it's the same picture from the time that i had that on the chats on the uh, live stream Volunteerism in Islam and Reconstructionist Judaism, 22 minutes, but that includes a little harp a day, a short talk by Roy Shulman. So that's going to be at 6 o'clock. Tonight is the premiere. And with that, I really will go. Yeah, there's no reason to, to watch it again if you already heard it. And I'm a little less nasty <laughs> so i took out some of my little digs that were probably inappropriate anyway in uh when i did it live so let me bring myself up back here for today and uh, of course the music is um a hymn to the cross so oops, you're listening to it now okay the hymn, uh, the Harp a Day hymn, which I'll go back to as soon as I shut up, is Crooks Fidelis, um, since we have been celebrating, so to speak, the cross. So let me bring up the music again and um, and then fade out. Uh... What's wrong? Oh, I know what's wrong. Hmm. I'm not doing very well right now. Okay. Okay, this will probably do it. Okay, I'll bring up the music and fade out. Crooks fidelis in terondes Arboruna nobilis Nulla silva talin profet Fronde flore germine Dulce Esclavos, dulce pondo sustine, angelingua gloriosi, per elium certaminis, et suo per crucis trofeo. Dictrium fum nobile, qualiter erem torbis, immolatus viceri. Crux fidelis inter omnes, arboruna nobile. Dulce pondo 
sus tine. E cu a patrii filiocue, inclito paraclito, sempiterna sid beate, Trinitati gloria, cuius alma nos redemit, ad servat gratia. Dulce pondo sostiene.